Hi friends, you are back with me, Professor Girish Kukreja. So today we are uh, supposed to solve a mystery. Uh, we are not supposed to solve a mystery. <laughs> we are supposed to know about a mystery rather. And that particular mystery is what is called as a virus. Yeah. Please don't turn off this video because I know we are very much like um, uh, not uh, what you call as ready to know more about these. But then yes, talking about a typical virus, as I told that uh, with advancements, we have been trying to know that uh, from where we have originated. So we are also trying to know and uh, we have not yet answered yet ki from where these particular viruses have come. Sometimes uh, I, I believe that whether we are living in a viral world or whether virus is living in our world or whether this world is being shared by all, I think that would be a right answer. So talking about this particular viruses, right? So uh, whenever we are talking about origins, uh, we are talking about the evidences of the origin. One of the major evidences which we look for is your fossil records. Now viruses being so small, they, they have not left any fossil records. So they have not left any traces from where they have come. <laughs> so we do not have these any fossil records for these particular viruses. They, they being so small, we, we really do not have any fossil records to know okay, from where they have originated. Then as far as the cells are concerned to know their lineages, like we talk about the common ancestor. So we have uh, made these lineages, we, we have developed this hypothesis of common ancestor, we have collected all the cells and uh, taken their ribosomal RNA genes and then we have developed this tree of life. Uh, unfortunately, like all those cells, they have uh, some genes which are common in all. All viral species, they even do not have one common gene which we can take and you can compare and you can find out ki whether there was one common origin, who was the real culprit, <laughs> uh, at least an imaginary one. So we, we are uh, like uh, still unable to sort out this particular mystery at all possible points. But then yes, we still have uh, many things coming up which point out or which gives us clue ki from where actually these particular viruses, they must have originated. So there are some people believe that it was virus who came first. Some believe that it was cells who came first and then virus started predating on these cells. So what exactly happened? So there are different uh, hypotheses uh, which talk about the origin of these particular viruses. I'll be talking about only three major hypotheses which are being talked about. One particular hypothesis is, is your reductive evolution. Reductive evolution or retrograde, degenerate or regressive evolution which makes us believe, not makes us believe rather, which hypothesizes that these particular viruses must have been uh, what you call as your inter intracellular parasites which are they already there but these must have been uh, some independent prokaryotes in uh, the beginning like for example we know that organisms like helicobacter organisms like mycoplasmas they are living inside the host so when they are living inside the host they have lost uh, many of their machinery right when uh, they will now come inside the host cell like we are we are well known to organisms like chlamydia we are known to organisms uh, like your rickettsias which are living inside the host cell so these are bacteria which are actually living inside the host cell they've also like lost most of their machinery because most of their functions are now being performed by the host cell so whatever things they are unnecessary they are being lost by these particular organism probably it is hypothesized that uh, the first viruses must have originated in the same fashion Matlab, they must have been a prokaryotic cell probably uh, in the beginning. They started living inside a particular host and then they started losing the machinery. And now um, they have lost uh, all the machinery in such a manner that once they are outside the host cell, they cannot multiply. Probably therefore we consider them as at the border of living and non-living. Uh, some of the examples which point out to them, like uh, we, we consider them as a link between the bacteria and viruses and many things they are actually pointing out. For example, if you talk about uh, typical pox virus, now this typical pox virus would be around uh, half a micrometer which would be uh, equal to size of a typical uh, say mycoplasma. So some of the viruses they are really uh, very big like they have they have good number of genes for example you have uh, your T4 uh, phage you have a pox virus the herpes virus which have around 80 to 200 genes right. We have uh, some of the uh, you can say mega viruses which are being discovered like we have the discovery of this mimi virus right uh, then later on the pandora virus which are which are large enough which have uh, genes which are around uh, 1.25 mb which have around uh, more than 1200 
ओपन रीडिंग फ्रेम्स विच हैव जीन्स विच आर एक्चुअली एनकोडिंग फॉर द प्रोटीन सिंथेसाइजिंग मशीनरीज द अमाइनोसाइटी आर एन सिंथेटाइज इज द इलांगेशन फैक्टर्स एंड मेनी अदर थिंग्स विच आर एक्चुअली हेल्पिंग द वायरस इन इट्स एंटेरिटी so this makes us believe you have you if you have seen a structure of a typical vaccinia virus now this is a very complex virus which has um, a dna uh, which has uh, many enzymes and which has uh, multiple layers of the envelope a very close uh, to a typical prokaryotic cell so all these discoveries they point out that probably these viruses must have been an independent prokaryotic cell in the beginning and when they started infecting the cells they started losing some of their functions and then developed into what we today call as your viruses yeah some of these viruses are really interesting we'll be talking about some of these in our upcoming videos another what you call as theory which uh, points out to from where this virus must have come is your intracellular origin it believes that uh, these viruses are uh, you can say uh, originated inside uh, a typical eukaryotic cell Let's say for example you have your retroviruses matlab earlier when these were first discovered these retroviruses having the enzyme reverse transcriptase which converts your rna into dna it was supposed to be very unique matlab it was thought that only these viruses they contain these uh, reverse transcriptase enzyme uh, later on matlab as discoveries went on people discovered that uh, no this reverse transcriptase is also found in some plants it is also found in some animals and probably uh, then people started believing that uh, like we all are known to this rna world hypothesis where they believe that it was the rna which was the first genetic material and then people started believing uh, or hypothesizing rather that it might be this particular uh, reverse transcriptase which would have been uh, the origin for converting all your rna into your dna so these particular uh, retroviruses they are actually uh, you can say supposed to be the most primitive forms of the viruses which are originated uh, inside the cell so some of the mutations must have taken place in these reverse transcriptase enzyme which has led to the development of the entire uh, what you call as the virus and then it could convert what you call as your rna into dna many believe that uh, some of the mobile genetic elements like your transposomes which we popularly call as the jumping genes or your plasmids they they must have independently come out of the cell and uh, they must have had an aggregate of the protein around them and that must have developed into a particular viruses right many many evidences point out to these like for example when we discovered telomerase now this telomerase also has this kind of reverse transcriptase activity of converting your rna into dna so many of the uh, homologies were found between a telomerase and a reverse transcriptase so all of these um, uh, they they actually reverse transcriptase of the retroviruses i mean so all these point out that probably these retroviruses Uh, must have originated from within the cell so you had a particular cell and from within the cell these segments came in and they uh, developed into a particular virus <laughs> i really don't know how it happened <laughs> so one it believes that uh, it was a prokaryotic cell it got reduced to a virus second uh, it's originated from a typical uh, uh, cell from within from these uh, nucleic acid sequences another thing which says that it was viruses who came first so when these things happen like pandemics i sometimes believe that these viruses are actually ruling and they are making us know that uh, yes this is my world so it is believed that they originated independently like we all know that uh, there are many clues which are pointing towards the rna world hypothesis which proves that rna was the first genetic material so uh, the theory of you can say co evolution or independent evolution which states that these viruses they came first and this was reinforced by the discovery of viroids which we know now these particular uh, viroids uh we know that viroid uh, viroid ribozymes actually when they were discovered this actually gave a clue that it was this particular uh viroid ribozyme which could independently replicate on its own and it could infect the plant cells now uh today the viroids which we know they are dependent on uh the host cell for their division and multiplication uh but probably uh, during the evolution when we were in the rna world uh, these particular viroids uh, could have been independent of these host cells so they came first 
and when they started living with the host cell probably then they started depending on them so it was first these particular viroids which came into picture many other things they actually also tell us that these viroids and viruses also they are linked for example you have some uh, defective viruses or we have what is called as your satellite viruses uh, if you talk about your uh, hepatitis delta virus uh, which actually has a rna genome which would be very very close to a typical viroid and this particular RNA genome, it can like, it has all infective properties, but then if it has to infect a new cell, it is dependent on the hepatitis B virus. So the outer protein uh, coat, which is there, it uses that of a hepatitis B virus. So uh, Delta virus itself is incomplete. Similarly, we have the Sputnik videophage, uh, which is actually dependent on this Mimi virus, which I was talking about, which was discovered in uh, protozoa. So when they, when this uh, Sputnik viriophage also has to infect the protozoa, it has to take help of this particular Mimi virus. So it also has its own RNA genome. So probably these, uh, they show us the link between viroids and your viruses. So this hypothesis believes that um, the viroids, they came first and then uh, they were converted into what is called as your viruses. We actually at this point do not have any uh, thing to like compare because you will find that there is a lot of uh, lateral gene transfer which is taking place in these particular viruses. We do not have all the vertical transfers which are taking place. So that is actually uh, uh, making this entire sequence of events complicated. So at this point we, we actually believe that probably viruses did not origin at one time and then they started evolving. Uh, some people believe uh, that uh, they originated at uh, multiple number of times during the course of evolution. So whenever they got an opportunity, they, they originated and they developed. So I really don't know how it exactly happened. But yes, now you probably have some idea from where these must have uh, come. So these particular viruses, as I told, to summarize, the three basic theories which talk about the evolution of the virus is your reductive evolution, which states that these particular viruses were earlier large enough uh, that of a size of a typical prokaryotic cell and then they uh, became small and dependent and then they developed into a virus. The second was the intracellular origin which states that uh, the virus is actually originated from within the cell uh, in the form of the mobile genetic elements like transposons, plasmids or the best example of your uh, retroviruses, uh, the reverse transcriptases. Uh, many things they point out towards that. And the last one is your independent origin or uh, the virus first hypothesis which states that your viroids, they came first, uh, you came late. <laughs> so probably as I told that uh, if this hypothesis is right, we are actually a contaminant in the virus world. So stay tuned with me, Professor Girish Kukreja for more in microbiology. Thank you.